Okay, dear. So, okay. Tell me what question that you have, and then I will try also with you a different, different uh, question until you are able to understand how this works. Did you understand anything from what we have done just now? So, is this used for stacks, like reactions, or is it just in general? Is it used for stacks? Sorry. Is it like used like? What is it used for? To check the equality, or to get a certain value after um carrying out the calculation? So it is used for um, how to say, for I would say. Doing summing of numbers, um, so it, it have a different purposes. But again, the purpose of, of re using recursion is that they write uh, less amount of code. So if we are talking about achieving the same result without recursion, yes, we are able to to write a simpler code without recursion to the same job. So if I want to add numbers. I, I no need to actually do this recursion, but this recursion somehow is um, um, they write it in a few lines. This is the only reason that they use it use recursion to add numbers or to sum numbers or so if you can see here, we are we are using recursion to re to add numbers to y until it reached 16. So every time I add, so I pass here x and y, with values, and then I add, I change and add here uh, the x and y, like that, based on the conditions that we are putting, which is uh, x minus 1 and x plus y. So I need it at the end to reach y equals 16 and x equal 1. And I needed y. So this is a kind of operation that I want to do on y to get 16. So the result of the function will return 16. Okay. Okay. Um, can I? Okay, so this is an exam question. Can you please look at this? This is a function. He gives you the function like that. So this is a recursive method. So again, um, this is the base condition. This is the condition where you will not be calling the same function and again and again. So here we are calling the function again and again, but with a different input. So this is a, I'm calling the function with a, here I'm calling it with a minus 2 and a minus 1. This is the base. If I reach, if I'm if a is bigger than or equal to, I will keep calling the same function but with a different input. If I reach that the a is less than 2, I will return 1. Okay? Okay. So so you see here. He asks us to determine the value rec5. So I call this function with the input a, with input 5, I'm sorry. So it means that a equal 5 in this case. So we have to look at here and see how we make it work. I would like you to, to actually have a look at this answer. So the way that you should answer is in this way. So see. This is rec5. And when you call rec5, we'll do two calls, rec3 and rec4, based on what? I, I see this. So see here. So when I see the return like that, it means that from this first call, which is rec5, I will do a second call inside it here, but with a different input. I will call rec a minus 2.
Hello, so Andrew? do I need to leave this till I get one? Yes. Until you get A equal one. Yes. Oh, okay. So again, so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, yes. keep adding, yeah. I'll keep subtracting the one. Um, yes, you will keep subtracting the input. Yes. So mm -hmm. can you please tell me A minus two equal what? So A over here is five. Yes. So five minus two is three. Okay, Plus and here, and here. Four. Okay, so each one of them, each one of them, will also call two times. So rec three, when I call it, it will actually give me two things. So this alone, where is this alone here? will result in this. And this here too will result in another two calls. So now I'll do three minus two and four minus one. Three minus two equal? One. Okay. And three minus one? Three minus one, um, two. Okay. And here, four minus so two. Oh, okay, so two. Okay, and here? Three, right? Yes. Okay. So each one of those, we will see if it reaches the condition or it needs to do another call. So rec one, if, it, if we pass A equal one here, will we run this or this? Is it A bigger than or equal to? Sorry. So when you call the function rec, this one, and you pass the input as a one, you will execute this code or this code. So you have two lines, two possibilities based on this condition. I do return one. Sorry again? R return one. I, I don't get you. Sorry, the voice sometimes uh, is on and off and not very clear. I'm not very sure why. Okay, will I return one? Yes, you will return one. In this case, you will return one, yes. Okay, so this means that this already finished, it will not call itself again. But what about this? So we need to check rec2. Rec2 will do what? Rec2. If I pass an input as A equal to, will I execute that number one or number two? Uh, you'll execute number one. Yes, so so now it means that I will have to make two calls, two another calls. Okay, now what is these two calls, please? Tell me what is the input here? So that's one, mm -hmm. sorry, that's zero. Oh no, two minus two. So it's zero, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, what about and here is, is what? One? Yes. Okay. And okay. So let me let me finish that portion first. And then we do that that calls because it will be similar. You see? There is a similarities. So let's have a look. So rec zero will execute that or all this so if i call with a equal zero what is the result a equal to zero I, yes so what this condition will evaluate to this true or this true the first one the first one here with rec zero this is zero so it means that a equals zero is it oh. zero, zero bigger than or equal to no, it's less than two. So, so it means that this will be executed. Okay. So I this one goes down here. So this is one. This one will result in returning one. When I call rec one. So what is the result for rec one? 
1 minus 2, so will it be? No, wait, wait. When I say A equal 1, when I call. Oh, okay, it's the second one then. Yes, so it is, I will also return 1 like that. Am I right? No. Okay, so good. So it means that for this rec 2, I do two function calls, and I know that this is the result of these two function calls. So I can do the same here. So I no need to repeat that same calls because I know that at the end, this rec two is exactly like this. So I will call rec zero and rec one and I will result to having two. So I will put I will put here just two, simple, to make it simple for myself. But in, in the in the exam, if you have a space, then you are able to write it in full, okay? And then the remaining, so these two also go down here the same. Now, rec three, I will have to make two calls. Rec three, I will have to call one, rec one plus rec two. You are lost. You are not with me. I'm a little confused. So are we what? not finished with it or do you just keep? We need to, we only finish once all of the calls reach one. So we're left with two right now. And yes. then we're left with another we, one. Left. Yes. So we are left with this. So we know from here, if we call rec one, we will have one. So this will result in one. This rec one. I, I already see that this is resulted in one. And rec two, I already see from here that this is resulted in two. So, so it will also result in two again. Okay. Yes. So can we, can you sum one plus one plus one equals three plus two and this three? So the result is eight. eight. Okay. So this is this is actually the result. This is how we calculate it. You see here how we managed to reach that. So as you can see from here, this is eight exactly like we, we did. So we keep we keep getting ones, ones, ones until we reach the number. So you need to you need to follow the same concept. So okay, I am not able to um to give more time here, but I'm giving you not only this exam question, I'm giving you other exam questions. So you will have to have a look at them and after the class. I need to cover other topics. Unfortunately, uh -huh. we are running out of time, so I need to cover as much as we can. Okay? I yes. truly apologize, but we are uh, running out of time. I'm sorry for that. There is no, no other choices that we have. Okay? Yes. Okay. okay, that's good. So that's why I'm telling you it's very important to look at the slides. I am giving you, I am, after this class, I'm giving you a list of exam questions on the topics that you need to, to, uh, to study for tomorrow. So most probably he will give you some of the exam questions. So I'm, I hope by looking into them that will, will help you, okay? So the second part here, this is the disadvantages of recursive methods. So the typical answer, I'm also passing it to you. You have a look at it, please, okay? So there is also another exam questions. You have to look at them, but I have to rush. The same way, so this is typical, another typical exam question. You don't, you don't need to design the function. You just need to find the result. So in this specific exam question, he is passing you this input. And the result of running this is actually one you are adding. He, he wants you to, to add the numbers of the input. So one, two, one is your input. He will, this calling will end up adding one plus two plus one plus six. It is a funny way that he will do that. And of course, if you look at it, to, for you to write the code, to be able to add the numbers like that, that will need some actually um, 
good number amount of code that will not be done in two or three lines like we are doing it here. Just by using only one line, we managed to achieve that result. But for you in reality to write a code to do that, that will be a lot of lines, you know? So, okay. so the point, one of the benefits that you write a few lines, it's complicated, but it have its positive and negative, okay? So again, I am telling you in short, the, you will discover that this, the purpose of that recursive method is to add this here. The answer is given to you. I will pass it to you after the class, okay? So you have a look at how it works. I need to move to something else, please. Thank you. Okay, that's good. So um, we need to talk about... Hmm. Yeah, uh, let me go through. I need to search, link it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any any chance that you heard about linked list before? Yes. Okay. Can you still remember anything about the linked list? Um, no. Okay. So this is we have three types of linked list: single linked list, double linked list, and circular linked list. We will see um, we will see uh, the three of them, and I will show you how you can delete this. You have to write no code, and I will show you example of um, past year exam questions here. So you see here. So this is a similar concept like the arrays, and linked list is a dynamic data structure. So we wanted a way that uh, we can arrange and remove and delete uh, elements very e much more easier than we have in the array. That's why we created this uh, dynamic structure. It's complicated, but uh, it has its own benefits. So we start with the head. The head is telling us uh, the start of the linked list. The linked list consists of nodes. So every piece like that is a node. This is a node. This is a node. This is a node. Each node consists of two parts, data, this one, and a pointer. The pointer point to next node. So the next node is at address 812. So you see here, the pointer is pointing to 812. The point here that since this is a dynamic data structure, so when you reserve a place in the memory, in the RAM, if you are talking about um, an array that have three elements, so if you, if you look at this, so the array have to get three consecutive memory positions and assign that to the array. But in the dynamic data structure, like a linked list, we don't care that they are consecutive. We only say that, oh, we want to reserve a linked list. And then once we need a node, a new place to, re to put data, we can, we can get the address here, and we point the address of the previous node to the next one. OK, so we look here. What is the free space that we have in the memory? Since we didn't uh, book all the numbers, we didn't know that the linked list will need 10 nodes or 20 nodes up front. We don't know. That's why we said dynamic data structure, it grows as much as you need. If you need more space, it will reserve for you a space. So you will find always that this address is different from this address, different from this address. Why? Because it is booked or reserved at different times. So no, not necessary that I will book uh, 11, 12, and consecutive uh, memory addresses that is one after another, no. So maybe I only book that address uh, after one hour, this after two hours, or this after 10 hours. It depends on the need. 
So imagine that that could be maybe um, information about certain events that happen. So if they say that rain is coming, so maybe they add data about the new rain. So if they say that uh, maybe a wind is coming, so they reserve data about the new wind. So whatever data they, are, they want to store, here we are storing information pet about animals, frog, lion, seal. So we do not reserve the places for all the nodes one shot, like we do with the array. Um, did I make myself clear so far? A bit? Not yet? Yeah. OK. So the, the node here, this is the second node. This is my second node. This is my first node. So in, in the arrays, we ha only have a place for element. We have an index. And we have an element, which is the data itself. This is the data. OK? But here, we have no pointers. We don't point to the next one, because the, the next one is at the second index here. So here, index 0, 1, 2. They are after, one after another. So I no need to reserve a place for a pointer. They are, they are after one another. But in the linked list, no. So that's why in every node, I need a place to store the data itself, which is the elements here, in this case. And I need a place for the pointer. So it can point to the next element. OK, so here I store frog on the second node, and then I have a pointer. The pointer point to what? It points to the next node, which is the third node here. So the third node have a pointer, and that pointer is for the fourth node. Fourth node here. And the fourth node, there got nothing. So this is a tail. And the tail point to null point to nothing. So since we have, so the pointer here, the last pointer is pointing to null, pointing to nowhere, nothing. We Because this is the end. So this is how we recognize that we reach the end of the linked list. Can you tell me what did you understand so far? So, it's a process, I don't know. Um... I don't understand what's the point of this. What is the point of having a, a linked list? Yeah. So, OK. A linked list, it is a, one of the dynamic data structure, same like the stack and the queue. But it is a different type in that um, in the stack and the queue, we, we put the data uh, one after another, OK? And but here in the linked list, it is another way to actually create a dynamic data structure that does not, um, how to say, does not need to be one after another. And it's also difficult. It's also difficult um, for the stack and queues to delete nodes in the middle. So what I want to say that. This is a type of a data structure. It has its own usage where we are able to search it very fast and we are able to add, we are able to add and delete nodes also very fast. So imagine that if I want to tell you, I want to delete one from this array, actually it's involved a lot of operation. It's very hard to remove one from the, from the middle and then shift three, in this, to the place of one. It's very hard. The, the easy, the, this is very easy here. Why? Because um, I have a pointer. So I no need to rearrange or bring this to be here or nothing. If I want to delete that node, okay, what I want to say that instead of the next pointer pointing to 208, I will change the pointer here. But what value I need to change to it? So if I want to delete that node, it means that this should point to this node. And it totally ignores that one. So I need to look at here. I need to save this 6, 4, 5. This is the value of the pointer. I need to put it in a temporary variable. 
because sometimes you need to describe the steps what, where you want to delete and add. So I need to store that pointer value here. And then I need to remove, delete uh, the value for that pointer here. I no need to point to 208 anymore. And then I need to take this 645, I put it here in this pointer. So this pointer will be pointing to the to this node. And this will be the third node. So I manage easily to actually remove one of the nodes very fast. Okay. So I am able to add and delete nodes very fast. But the problem if I want to sort or even to search, I have to search one by one. If I want to search, I tell you, okay, we have four nodes in a linked list. So please find for me the node that is having data as a seal. So you have to really sequentially search one by one and check the data. So go to the first node, check what is the data? Is it equal seal? No, it is not. So we go to the next. And then we go to the line. And then we go to the seal. Oh, this is, uh, we managed to find the seal. Okay, so that is how it works. What is a node exactly? A node, so a node is a place to, mainly a place to store the data and to point to the next node. So a node is a, it's an area in the memory. So, okay, um, in the reality, in reality, you know that we have, um, oh, we have string. Do you know what the meaning of string? Um, is it the string that you if, if I if I tell you if I tell you I want to uh, to have two variables, a string yeah. and an integer. Is that clear to you when I tell you a string and integer? Yeah. So a node, it is um, a, a place that can carry two, two possible uh, information, okay? Uh, if I am storing here strings, so I will be having a variable that can carry string and another variable that can carry an integer. The variable that carry, carry an integer is actually this pointer. So a node is a kind of structure that is in the memory that can be put in the memory that reserve two places to store information in. So this is what we call a node. A collection of these two data is called a node. A place to store the data itself. If the data is string, then I reserve a place for a string. So the node consists of a string. If I put here instead of pet thousand, so it means that I need I'm storing integers. So instead of putting a uh, string like that, I put an integer. So then my node now become a place in the memory that I can store two uh, integers. Did I manage to clear the node? What is the node? Yeah. So at the end, you are not taking the programming. Um, since you are not taking the option C, so you're not taking the programming of, of the linked list. You are taking only the theoretical part of it. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I want to say here is that um, this is how the linked list looks like. May, may I know, did you understand anything here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, Emperor, again, um, I want to tell you the best way to prepare for the final exam is to, to finish the syllabus at least two months, finish studying the syllabus at least, at least two months before the exam, and then start uh, practicing with ex exercises and pass your exam papers two months before the exam, two months before the exam. Because once you keep solving uh, past year exercises, your understanding of the subject will, will keep deepening and, and become more stronger. So I understand that you are caught up in the middle of nowhere. I understand your position and I really pity you. Um, I just don't want you to, 
um, to feel sad or disappointed. It is, this is a heavy topics. It need time to digest. And typically this topic might need one or two classes each, but we are, we are explaining them in short. So I need to create a crash course slides based on your requirement. This is not the typical slides that we, that we used to teach. So I needed to create something very fast for you to be able to, to have an information about what you're going to, to see in the exam. So did you understand now that is, uh, I understand that you, you're feeling and not very comfortable of what you are hearing. I understand that and I pity you, but I, I'm trying my best to, to help you according to, to the uh, circumstances that we are in now. You understand me? Yeah. Okay, so please, um, we close and open again. Um, okay? Yeah.